Whether you keep them in your home or love to see them in theirs, these are the creatures that bring us all together. Reptiles. Reptiles. We're going to be delving into the experiences of reptile lovers from around the block and around the world. This is the Reptile Talk Podcast. Boom! What is going on, everybody? This is Jeremy Turgeon from Brassman Reptiles. I'm Rob, and I'm creeping it real. Hey, how are you, Rob? I am doing okay. I it was like really crappy out this morning, and then it got nice and like seventy degrees. So it was pretty well, it's not bad. I spent most of my day outside while driving, but outside, so it was nice. Yeah, it was it was pretty nice today. Um, so before we, we dive totally into things, uh, with our guests tonight, I'd certainly want to just plug this because it, it matters, uh, for anybody that has missed it, uh, North Carolina, uh, the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission had their, their vote, uh, on a total ban as well as the various other, uh, items on the, uh, on the docket that had to get voted on and, uh, things did pass, uh, the tegu ban is now, uh, gone from all species of tegus to uh just argentine black and white tegus um unfortunately this also includes blue tegus uh because they are recognized as the same uh, at least for the time being um so there is a grandfather clause uh more about how you can apply for that permit will be coming soon so please keep checking with us arc for that uh that permit will not need to go uh will not need to happen until uh august 1st of 2022 do it before then yes yeah obviously want to get that done before then so keep watching uh for us arc for updates on on uh how you can apply for that permit as that stuff will be forthcoming um but yes so not a ban on all species of tegu so not a complete loss but certainly still very annoying um so yeah just keep watching us arc always us arc always us arc for all that stuff um, I'll, I'll probably be reaching out to Phil uh, shortly about getting him on at some point uh, in the next couple of weeks so we can discuss that and uh, other things that are going on, like with the America Competes Act and, and all that wonderful stuff. So I want to get that out of the way because it's important and it just happened. So it's still quite relevant. Um, so, yeah, U.S. Arc. Woohoo. Um, all right. Tonight's guests. Rob, I'm excited. Uh -huh. Tonight's guests. I'm so excited. Here. There's going to be a lot of noise in the background because they're working, technically, here working. They're on the clock, but that's okay. <laughs> well, we're talking with Mickey and Tamara from Show Me Snakes, one of our sponsors. What's up, guys? Hi. Hey. Hey, guys. What is Love up? It. We have Love the fancy background. The fancy background going on. We discussed this off camera, but now I got to bring it up now that we're live. <laughs> Which oh, so where, where are you guys at right now? Where are you setting up a show right now? Uh, we're in Springfield, Missouri. That's a there hall from here. Outside, outside of the Show Me Snake show that's happening there, is there anything else cool in Springfield, Missouri? There's like a huge aquarium down here, and uh, I think the world's biggest bass pro shops down here out, outside of that. I mean, there's a lot of cool hiking places and stuff like that. You guys would like it. Hell yeah. That's cool. Rob Rob does like his hikes. <laughs> I do. I do. Same. I do be liking hiking. So <laughs> like hiking. the Show Me Snake shows is like kind of on the newer, but uh, I really have enjoyed all the Show Me shows that I've gone to. And you guys are just like taking over, you know, not just in the central part of the U.S., but you guys are hitting the East Coast, too. Um, so what was the plan? What what was the, the catalyst to start this? Uh, Really? We just wanted to make shows better, you know, and, and grow the community. Uh, that, that's, that's where it all started, you know? Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. And you've got your own collection of snakes, too. you got some really nice stuff. What, what does your collection look like right now? Uh, let's see. I got about, I don't know, I, I want to say like 80 ball pythons. Uh, I think I got like 100 cobras, 150 cobras. And then a bunch of miscellaneous rattlesnakes and other vipers. And I got a bunch of colubrids too. We got a few hundred animals. Oh yeah, I got some monitors. Yeah. Uh, I got some white throats. I got some black throats. I I got a little zoo going. 
<laughs> it sounds it. I knew you had a, a decent sized collection. I didn't know you had that many animals. That's that's pretty badass. Dude. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty freaking awesome. So, so you guys have a lot on, uh, kind of on your plates at all times. So obviously the show me shows they're they're always happening. Uh, yeah. But they're not just reptile expos. You guys also uh, educational events all over the place. Yeah. Uh, so and then Midwest Venom Fest. Yep. Uh, and, <laughs> and I'm sure I'm I'm sure I'm forgetting things because I'm drawing a blank staring. What's the new thing? Oh, we just op- we decided last week we're gonna open a little shop out in our hometown. Heck. So I got something to do during the day. Yeah, it's just a reptile <laughs> shop. We're when like anti downtime, you know. Yeah, we don't like sitting still, so it's horrible. <laughs> well, That'll thanks do it. Still with us for a few. <laughs> yeah. Oh it's man, keep up. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, as far as how did all of the these things just kind of come up? So, you know, show me shows. We're talking about you know taking reptile shows to the next to the next level you know, getting involved with doing the educational things. What what was behind that and what was behind getting Venom Fest happening too? So so really I, I just look at like the community, I'm like I like the venomous community, like everybody's just all over the place. You know, there's not a lot of unity within, you know, the venomous community. So I'm like, you know, we need something like like Tinley for the venomous community, kind of a gathering for everybody. I know we got Hamburg and everything like that, but that really leaves everybody in the in the Midwest and, and the rest of the country out, you know. So, like, oh, we'll, we'll do a Midwest Venom Fest and and see how it goes. You know, we set up a, a few educational booths and stuff like that. We're trying to get some more speakers lined up. Uh, not a lot of people like to go speak or they're busy with other things. So, but uh, yeah, I I feel like you know when we started Midwest Venom Fest, it's kind of like hey, let's, let's get everybody in the venomous community a little organized. And together. And together so we can, you know, start educating newer keepers and, and stuff like that. Because there's, there's a wealth of great knowledge out there with all these older keepers yep. that's going to be lost when they're gone. And it's like, hey, guys, come share some of this with these uh, new kids that you don't care too much about so they can carry it on to the next, next group of people. Yeah, for real. I see a lot of, like, the venomous keepers. They just are like – all these kids today are just idiots and they don't know what the hell they're doing. And then it's like, Hey, would you like to mentor some younger people into working with venomous snakes? Oh no, no, I won't do that. And it's like, how are people supposed to get better if there's no one modeling the right way to do things or, or the people who are prominent and right in your face are not the ones that, you know, are doing it the right way. And it's just, it's really frustrating to see like, you know, there's lots of people who do venomous snakes and then they don't do any sort of like education or they don't do any sort of like, you know, uh, mentorship. And it, it's tough to, to be able to mentor someone with venomous snakes. You know, it takes on a lot of risk for you um, as the mentor. But like, dude, even if you just have them watching you work with things, people can learn things just by watching people like a lot of things. And even just coming to like Midwest Venom Fest and knowing that that person's there supporting what you're doing and there to help you and just knowing you're there it makes a huge difference. Mm-hmm. Instead of just mm-hmm. attacking each other. Yeah. yeah. He loves to do that. <laughs> I don't know. I enjoy mentoring people and, 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 and you know, even, even other people that are doing shows, I'll, I'll be like, hey, you know, maybe try this or do this. You know, uh, I think, what do I have a new, I have a new apprentice starting with us at eight o'clock in the morning on Tuesday. So, uh, he's going to clean Cobra poop while he watches me move the animals. Yep. You know what I mean? You, uh, you just got to keep, keep giving back, you know, really. So, yeah. And a lot of these people just like to run their mouth and they're not giving anything. They're, they're just taking and, you know, that's not how you build a community. That's not how you get people together. That's not how you get organized. It's not how you keep things rolling. It's how you yep. just do whatever the hell you're doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Heck yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> Heck yeah. No, it's true. It's true. It's nice because, I mean, uh, you know, as you said, the, the industry certainly, certainly like to attack each other more so than anything else with the venomous community and, and, and otherwise, you know, so it, yep. it's definitely refreshing 
to see somebody trying to do something different and making an impact and doing that, you know, um, that's huge. Uh, I will certainly point out because I already brought it up before bringing you guys on. You guys are massive U.S. Arc supporters, and that's yes. epically huge. We try. Yeah, I wish we could do more. Honestly. Yeah. No, you, but you, what, man, the fact is, you're you're doing something. You're doing something, and and that that goes far beyond a lot of other shows that exist in the entire country. So, <laughs> yeah, dude. When I was in New England, I had to like bring it up to the show promoters to be like, "Hey, you guys should talk about U.S. Arc," and they're like, "Well," and I'm like, "No, no, no. Why is this not like a you know if if this shit gets banned?" Your show ends. Your way of making money ends. You should care about this. Like, what the hell? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I want uh, you know kids when I'm seventy years old to still be able to enjoy doing this. Mm-hmm. That's that's the goal. You know, I I don't want this to be so restricted that that you know people have to stop doing it. I'm really sad about that Tegu stuff that just went through in North Carolina. That was uh, pretty ridiculous. I was in on that that meeting, and that was ugh, don't even get me started. Yeah, no, it is certainly certainly frustrating. I mean, uh, I think there were there were some people that definitely jumped the gun uh, after uh, the vote had happened before the final draft came out. And there were definitely a lot of people that were you know getting those pitchforks sharpened uh, you know before it was even really necessary. And again, obviously, it sucks that we uh, are going to lose black and white tegus here um but it's not everything you know so again it's not a total win but it's also not a total loss you know um it's also better from the standpoint of you know south carolina if we lost everything here south carolina guaranteed would have been going back and revisiting their tegu band and trying to make amendments to that to follow suit uh, you know so again not the desired outcome but Certainly, the lesser of two evils at the moment when it comes to it. So, yeah, it, at least it gives us some uh, some room to kind of push it back in a couple of years. So, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it definitely opens up the gates to be able to be like, hey, okay, now let's uh, let's revisit now with maybe science. Right, <laughs> trust the science. <laughs> yeah, okay, it would it's, certainly it's, be. It's, it's just crazy because we have like 300 people uh, voting on each of these, you know, proposals, and we had 75 percent people who were against. Like 75 percent of the people who voted on these rules did not want them to get approved, and then the board still approved them. So it's like they just they're going to do whatever the hell they want. They don't really care what what the public thinks. Oh, hold on, Rob. You were making a valid point. My audio cut out. I couldn't hear a thing you said. That's oh, just like oh. the, the meeting. Seventy-five percent of the people who voted on, like, in the public uh, input thing, seventy-five percent of the people who voted did not want any of this to pass, and the board still passed all of it. Over three hundred people. Yeah, I think it was a total. The total people that were in that Zoom meeting were four hundred. It was four hundred and seventy-one people in total yeah. in the meeting, which is which is huge. I mean, obviously, we we can't say they are all reptile people. We love for them to all have been reptile people, um, and I think that it's safe to say the vast majority were, um, mm-hmm. you know. But it sounded like there were quite a few people who cared a lot about them squirrels. So, you know, that was the thing. But, uh, you know, so you figure we'll say 400 of the 471 were reptile people, you know, and 75% of that. So, you know, talking 300 people were like, nah, nah, don't do that. And they were still like, yeah, we're just going to do it anyway. So, yeah, certainly, certainly frustrating. So raising awareness is certainly, certainly huge, um, you know, and the shows are, are, definitely a front line for us you know it, it's one of the few times when vendors get to meet their their customers face to face especially if they mostly just do online sales and uh, and it's a time when we get to interact with those first time buyers 
you know, that person just wants a pet and they have no idea what, what is uh, you know, looming in the background. Well, even if it's not, you know, creating customers or reptile keepers, we can still create allies. You know, a lot of times when families come out to these shows, you'll see a mother and a father with their three kids and they come out and they experience reptiles for the first time. And they're like, oh man, these aren't so bad. So they go back and, and they, they have a really good experience. So they're like, the experience is really important with how they think about the reptiles in the whole industry. Like even if they're not keepers, it's very yeah. important. Right. So if we make a good impression on them here, even if they're walking in off the street and they're not buying anything, you know, maybe something will come up and they'll be like, Hey, why would they want to ban a reptile? That Those things are cool. I seen them at that show. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you guys really, um, you, you're, you're in a unique position because uh, I work with some people who are not really reptile people, but they're, they've like had a reptile before and yeah. they don't know anything about YouTube. They don't know anything about, you know, any of these big companies that do reptiles, but anytime that there's a local reptile show, they're like, Oh, I always go to the local reptile show uh, to yeah. check it out. And you know, you guys have that unique opportunity to talk to people who might not be plugged into the community, but kind of plugged into just seeing reptiles, you know, a couple times a year. And uh, it really, uh, it's awesome to me to see that you guys are, you know, educating and pushing us arc and making sure that people who wouldn't have been exposed to some of that stuff before get exposed to it because otherwise it's just in the wind and we're just creating an echo chamber where we're just talking to other people who are, you know, it's, it's important for us to talk about us arc. But sometimes it's like, okay, everyone I know is signed up or, you know, everyone I know and I've talked to is like, yep, I did something, you know, I at least shared a post. Um, you know, I have kind of made a tight knit community of just people who are super into it. But, uh, and, you know, not working at the store anymore, I'm not really getting to talk to people who are just getting their first reptile or interested in reptiles. And you guys are in that kind of position where you can still do that. And I think that's awesome. Well, and that's that's kind of the fun thing about the shop too. I'm uh, I'm pretty excited about it, uh, you know, because I can educate from there too. It's easier mm -hmm. for locally to do educational events in a spot like that. We can do more of them. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, because I mean, it's 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 really just about growing this and in creating allies, you know, because mm -hmm. let the less people we've got saying, oh, gross, a lizard or a snake the better off we're going to be exactly yeah yeah and it just takes you know you you talk to someone you change their mind about snakes and then the next time someone says that they're gross around them they, they might you know speak up for them it, it just takes it's small little increments and we can make a really big change and we know it's working we have people who come in all the time and say you know i only came here because my husband wanted to come here and, and i'm not afraid or now we have a reptile or you know, we're trying to teach our kids this. Like, even though there's parents out there and people out there who aren't really into it, they're still bringing their kids here and still making a difference on their perception of the whole entire thing. So that's really good. It's mm -hmm. nice to see it. So we're actually working. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Some of the kids that <laughs> used to come to our shows early on, now they're breeding reptiles. Yeah. They're, they're young adults. And I love that so much. Yeah. Makes Thank me feel you. old as uh, hell, but... <laughs> <laughs> It is what it is. Yes. Is that how it's gonna feel? I get people who say that to me. They're like, "I remember when you were like this little guy who just would like show up at the shows, and now you're doing, you're working you there, and you're doing it? this. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Who the heck was I talking to? I made, uh, I made this, that big Facebook post the other day about like the various species that I've worked with over the years and uh, Rob Hannison who I bought a bunch of Honduran milk snakes from back in the day uh, was like I remember when I sold you those things and like I was like thanks me too I was a child <laughs> <laughs> making me remember how young I was when I got those <laughs> Bruh. right we're just a bunch of lifers yeah. like what else yeah. are we going to do yeah, exactly. Exactly. I can't do anything else. Uh, this is this is it for me. Nah. Nah. I I can't I can't even just go play music because then everybody is still going to ask me about snakes when I go to play music. So I have to keep doing snakes. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you're the snake guy that plays the trumpet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's not the other way around. <laughs> right. It's the Jeremy Snake Quartet and Brass Man Reptiles. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You should throw a picture like that. I will. Snake's playing the trumpet. <laughs> New logo. Oh. To- <laughs> oh, boy. Glorious. <laughs> She'll do so it. So where's, where's your next show scheduled for? Oh, Lord. Let's see. Next weekend, uh, I'm in Janesville, Wisconsin. Yeah, Grove Town. We got – no, we don't have no. Grove Town next weekend. We've got uh, Gadsden, Alabama, and Columbia, Missouri. And I feel like I'm forgetting one. I got to look at the sheet. Tamara's got a big education show next weekend at a home and garden show. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All weekend wow. long. That's She's got like a TV interview and like half a dozen presentations throughout the weekend. It's just there is no sleep, no sleep, <laughs> Damn. team no sleep. And then we're going to Wisconsin next weekend to try and uh, break our ten thousand dollar U.S. Ark auction record that we yeah. set last year. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah! That's Me and awesome. Ryan McBay are going to rock that out. We're going to try and raise like twenty five thousand dollars. Boom! Yes, dude, that's sweet. That's It'll so be exciting. Fun. I really quick just want to throw this out there just because our other show sponsor is in the house, Black Box Cages and Racks. What is up? Hi, guys. We'll, we'll, we got to have you guys on next. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, actually, actually, I'll be out in your guys' neighborhood soon, too, uh, out there in Durham. That's by me. That's right. <laughs> That's not by me. That's still a drive for me. But it's, it's, it's still way it's out there. Just though. two hours. Yes. That's yeah, just, it's only two hours. Yeah, but you know what? You know what's funny is I'm gonna be I'm gonna be twelve hours away. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll make cupcakes. Oh, no, I'm so mad. I'm gonna be twelve hours away. <laughs> uh, party at Rob house, Rob's house later, so I can get cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, cupcakes. Those were actually really good cupcakes. Oh, yeah, yeah, those were man. fire. I, I those always made my day. I ate about six more than I needed to. <laughs> I always love people's reaction, especially especially now being in a new place. People who don't know Rob and all of a sudden you start walking around bacon covered cupcakes and like people are like, ugh, ugh, I don't like the sound of that. That sounds gross. And and everyone who's already had one's like, no, no. Man, it's good. It's good. It's good. No, my the way my diabetes works, I just I can't do it. <laughs> nah, people are like, oh, that's gross. Uh, maybe I'll try it, and then they try it, and they're like, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of the same thing with new reptile keepers. They're like, ah, I don't know. It's a snake. Yeah, they're like tarantulas. No, and then all of a sudden they have a hundred tarantulas. Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. I'm a tarantula breeder now. I've got a Facebook page. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Bruh. Oof. Bruh. I, I can't. Mean, hey, if you have if you have a Facebook page, uh any kind of logo and a catchy business name, you're pretty much you're pretty much a That's right. professional you stickers. In there. Uh, yeah, in there. If you have stickers, you're a ball python breeder. That's, oh no. Yeah, that's it. hundred percent. I'm out. <laughs> Rob's gone. Yeah, if you have what? stickers, you're hundred percent a ball python breeder. That's that's yeah. how it works. <laughs> it's it's good though. I I I really enjoy you know this like because we do watch newer people come in. They start vending shows, or sometimes you watch them because I watch everybody at the shows. I remember faces, and uh, I watch people come in and buy their first snake, and then I watch them buy like their fiftieth snake, and then they'll start vending shows and. You know, they start building little businesses and stuff, and it's really, really cool to watch that growth. Absolutely. And to know no. they were doing it at our show. Yeah, I like that. That's awesome. Heck yeah, heck yeah. So, what's <clears throat> what has been one of the most amazing moments at a show a show that you guys? One have? of the what? One of the most what moments? Most amazing moments, like one of the things where you were just like, "Man, I can't believe that just happened." Like in the greatest way, like in the great sense, not in the like 
what yeah, the it, was it, that? It, it, in a sense, not like having me come down to the first show me show an hour and a half late and then be an hour and a half late to leave <laughs> where everybody's like, fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like we've had people like get engaged in our shows and yeah. stuff like that. That's that's pretty cool. We have people well, who follow cool. us and keep scrapbooks of the shows that they attend. Yeah, they do, yep. don't they? Yeah. Yep. And they keep a list of all the shows that they've been to. Um, we've had people who go to the shows and they go to the parking lot, look at the license place to see how many states are at the show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's- yeah. Hell yeah, that's awesome. I don't know. The coolest part is watching everybody literally grow up at our shows and, and Ben. That's the coolest thing. Heck yeah. Uh, okay, this is not this has not been super chatted. Usually, I only focus on the super chats, but but we just talked to this guy, so I think it's important that I show this one. Brian Cusco is in the house. How many show me snakes are there a year, and which is the best one to go to? The best ones to go to really depends on you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it depends on how close it is. It depends on what you like. It depends because. Every one of them is different. I mean, yeah. I'm really partial to St. Louis, and I like this Springfield show. Uh, they're home shows for us. Yeah, there are home shows. Uh, I mean, it's kind of like asking me which one of my kids I like the best. Yeah, true. <laughs> Everyone has a favorite. It's true. I, I do, but don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Heck, yeah, though. That's awesome. I dig it. I think, oh, I think Knoxville is pretty, a pretty good one. Yeah. Uh, Nashville's pretty decent. I mean, we got we got a handful of them that are pretty good. Heck yeah, we do. We have a we have a North Carolina celebrity in the house. Just just dropping comments here. You know the usual. <laughs> What's up, Limey? <laughs> oh man, so Limey. I don't know if Limey even wants me to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway, and then he'll just get mad at me later, I guess. Uh, so Limey agreed to come on the podcast, but it can only be for a brief moment, so he won't be a full, full-fledged full guest. It's just going to oh be boy. him popping on for maybe, maybe two or three minutes and then him leaving, but I think it could still be like the greatest episode ever. Like, I think if we planned an episode where it was like, Rob, you and I, and maybe like Kevin and Barcheck, if the four of us were here and then all of a sudden just like Limey popped up and was like, what up, fuckers? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> and, and then just gone and just leave and not say anything. And then the rest of the world would be very confused. But those of us <laughs> who know would be like, yeah, that just happened. <laughs> That would be something else. It would be. It would be something else. <laughs> so, Miggy, do you guys allow? Do you guys have um, venomous vendors at, at at any of the show me shows? Yeah. So, uh, all of our South Carolina shows are venomous shows. Uh, we have Midwest Venom Fest. Let's see here. Which other one do we allow venomous? Oh, El Paso, Texas allows venomous. Pretty much anywhere we're allowed to have venomous, we have venomous there, uh, just so we can kind of grow the areas where it's allowed. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I think that when you get to go to a show and, and see some venomous up close, like people are not used to seeing, you know, good vipers and, and all sorts of stuff, you know, like the general public. So getting for a chance for them to be able to see some of that stuff is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, they really, uh, they really enjoy it. I know out here in Missouri, towards the springtime, I'll usually bring native venomous out to show kids. Like, we'll display it. That's cool. Show kids now to touch when they're out in the woods and things like that. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah, that's really cool. Education is key. Mm-hmm. And show them that not every snake is a cottonmouth or a copperhead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, Rob? I can't tell you how many people since I've been down here have been like, oh, I saw a copperhead. I saw a copperhead. And I'm like, you probably didn't see a copperhead. <laughs> probably didn't. That was a rat snake. <laughs> <laughs> you, a black rat snake that you've now got <laughs> as a copperhead. Good job. 
Good. It God. rattled its tail at me and, and tried to bite me. It was sizing chased me down. down. It chased me down. Yeah, it chased me down. There was a whole group of them. Yeah, there was like oh, six no. of them. They were fighting each other. I was fighting for my life. Oh, man. The sad thing is, is we've all heard these things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. That is it's crazy, man. You know, it's awesome, man. I, you know, education, education really goes such a long way, and uh, you know, I think for those of us that uh, you know have been in it for so long and have put in that time to understand, like, you know, we just get so I get, I don't want to say full of ourselves, but we get so used to being around people and communicating with people that you know they already generally have a clue. You know, and uh, not not everybody is made to teach people to teach other people about stuff. You might love these animals, but you might be terrible at talking about them, and that's okay. You know, it's not everybody's strength. But uh, you know, when when you have people yourselves out here, you know, on the front lines educating, you know, from so many different facets, from you know what you get to see at a reptile show to like, hey, we're gonna you know ID our native venomous reptiles and. You know, this is an opportunity for you to learn what's around you. That's that is invaluable. You know, and I mean, even if a, even if it's a kid and they only walk away with, man, I saw this cool rattlesnake. Like, you know, if that kid now goes home and Google's, you know, rattlesnake, you know, near me or whatever, they can kind of relive that and you know get kind of just excited about that kind of stuff. So, so it it just means everything. Seriously. I always love seeing whenever it clicks, you know, you know what I mean? Whenever you see it kind of click in somebody. Yes. When they go from being afraid to being like, Oh my God, I want one of these. Like, I, I love that. Like just that click. It, it just takes a second. It's, yeah. it's so awesome to watch that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, that's probably one of the biggest things I miss not, not being uh, in the, the, the nerd areas, having people come in and <laughs> them, especially finding that person that's not really into what's going on <laughs> and then they get that moment when they touch their first reptile and there and you you see that click and you're like ah, i got you now now you're holding everything after this <laughs> right you sink the hook in them and it's like oh i got you like yeah absolutely, absolutely. you're one of us now <laughs> yep yeah <laughs> one of That's all us. it takes 100 <laughs> percent. uh shout out to christina hill for the super chat Grateful for you guys and what y'all are doing. Much, much love and respect, fam. We appreciate you, Christina. Thank you much. Damn. All right, it is about that time. I'm gonna run our lovely author ads, and we'll be back in about two minutes. Black Box Cages, located in Buford, Georgia, is your one-stop shop for all of your caging and rack needs. Owners Jen and Clint are at the helm of this fantastic company. With one of the shortest lead times in cage and rack manufacturing, Black Box can satisfy anyone's needs. From baby racks to V70s, arboreal and terrestrial caging to deep-fronted bioactive enclosures. You can find everything you need right here. New enclosure sizes and products are added frequently to their availability, so be sure to check back often. Black box cages have tons of customizing options for lighting and heating. Along with that, cages and racks can be stacked with metal stacking dowels, and all cage joints are datoed for improved durability and stability. Most cage units are flat packed, but are pre-assembled prior to shipping to ensure a solid build every time. The Micro, XC18, XT3, BioG, and 3-Stack V70 ship assembled, and all other racks are shipped freight and assembled. The XR16 and XR20 model racks allow keepers to mix and match tubs. Fitting both Vision and Freedom Breeder tubs, you can mix the V15, V18, and V35S tubs, or the FB5, FB8, and FB35CVSC tubs. This kind of flexibility allows keepers to raise their animals from hatchling to juvenile or sub-adult size before needing to upgrade into adult caging. Don't just take our word for it. Go to their website to see countless customer reviews and review videos from keepers all over. 
To learn more about Black Box Cages, follow them on Facebook and Instagram at Black Box Cages, and of course their website www.blackboxcages.com. Links to their socials and website will be available in the podcast description. The Show Me Reptiles and Exotic Shows are taking the country by storm. Dedicated to education, quality, and engagement, you can expect a wonderful experience at a Show Me Show, be it an expo or an educational event. Founders Mickey and Tamara are working tirelessly to not only create memorable expos and educational events, but also to engage in conservation efforts and industry preservation. They are proud U.S. ARC supporters and do a lot to ensure that they spread the word at every show. Find a Show Me Snakes show near you. Shows are hosted in 19 states, from Rhode Island to Florida, Colorado to Texas. There's sure to be one near you. The Show Me Show territory is ever-growing, so if there isn't one by you just yet, hang tight. To find out more info about the Show Me Shows, to book an educational event, or just to learn more in general, make sure you check out their website, showmesnakes.com. All of the links to their socials and, of course, their website will be available in the podcast description. (laughs) Hi, guys. Hi. (laughs) <laughs> I was feeling I know those pants. people. He has some nice pants on. His hand oh. smells nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Is this how we what we do at ad breaks? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we rarely get to spend the weekend together anymore, so it's like, hey. Your pants go nice. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> the second half of this podcast is gonna be a little saucy. <laughs> No, it's show me snakes after dark. Show there you go. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right. Before we dive into more stuff, just want to give a shout out to Jay Hill Jr. for the super chat. Appreciate it. Top Target Focus on education. Please support. Thank you, man. We appreciate it. Constantly appreciate this. Big thanks. Damn. <clears throat> okay. So as mentioned in the sponsorship ad. Uh, you, so you guys are constantly expanding your territory and doing stuff all over the place. So is there a target state that you guys are uh, are looking to bring some show me shows to? So I'm looking at a couple of markets right now, but it's all a surprise, guys. Oh, it's a surprise. Come on, come, come on, on. Come, come on, on. Guys. man. Can you at least tell us a coast? Are we going to be east coast, west coast? Where are we at? Uh, it's, it's a little bit all over the place. No, there's a few in mine. Yeah, it's it's this way and that way. Not helpful. Maybe. <laughs> so so really, our main focus for this year was kind of dialing in the shows that yep. we built last year. So I mean, we might only come up with a few new locations this year, but mm-hmm. really, what we're building is uh, like we're training our, all of our staff. Like we're coming up with a training program for all of our staff. Yep. Our coordinators are out on the floor. You know, that way they're representing our community and us very well. Yeah. So we're, we're working on training those guys and uh, we're working on making what we already have better. Better. So the growth this year is not going to be as much as it was last year. Like, you're not going to see us throw out like, what did we throw out? Like 30 locations last year. Mm-hmm. Yep. We're probably only going to wow. expand it four new markets this year we're focusing more on building each location that we put out there just to draw the blood out of each location to get more people more support yeah mm-hmm. heck yeah that was, that was good drawing blood we're drawing the blood guys yeah because yeah. she's actually doing a blood drive at one of our shows <laughs> oh really <laughs> two, of them. Two, of them now. two of them yeah two of them. damn damn hmm. look at that that's pretty cool i that do want to no, I was just going to say, I do want to touch on the uh, Show Me Shows After Dark. We should actually talk about what that is because I think it's a pretty cool concept. Yeah. And I, I don't when, think any other shows are doing that. It's when Mickey starts no, getting the first show. <laughs> So Reptiles After Dark, uh, I, I would get a lot of emails and stuff about, hey, you know, I can never make the shows because I get off work at 5 o'clock or I work until 4, I can never make the shows. So I thought to myself, like, Man, it'd be, it would be really cool to be able to, to do a show in the evening time. Uh, I, I had a, I have a different vision for where I want to take it. Like, I want it to be more laid back with maybe a little music playing in the background and, and maybe a little, little drinking, you know, more of a social time. Uh, you know, but 
some of the locations are getting pretty busy and it's not really a social time. It's, it's basically having a second yeah. reptile show at night. Like our last Knoxville one was, I mean, geez, it was packed. Like you can tell the difference. Put the work. <laughs> yeah. They were busy. Damn. That's awesome though. And you have like a little break between, so like vendors can chill yeah. out, go get food, go do whatever they're going to do. And a lot of times you get food for the vendors. You go and order pizzas and stuff, which is like no other show do- does that. They don't care. They don't really give a shit. Yeah, I know tomorrow we're having a U.S. ARC auction here, and I felt kind of bad for holding everybody hostage. So I ordered like 70 pizzas from Domino's to be delivered here tomorrow and got a bunch of beer coming and stuff like that. So Hell yeah. It- you stay here, we'll feed you. Yeah, if you stay, we'll feed you. I mean, <laughs> we got to bribe everybody. But, uh, you know, it, it's just something we enjoy doing. Uh, I love coming out to the shows every weekend, even though it does get – it gets tiring. I really love being out here with everybody because I'm just like everybody else is. You know, I used to sit back and bend shows. I, I still breed reptiles. Like, it's, it's like a big family. It's That's what I was going to say. It's literally our family. So when we go to each location, we haven't seen anybody in a long time. It's like seeing your uncle you haven't seen in a while. Your good mm-hmm. uncle, not your, your freaky uncle. Your good uncle. The good one. <laughs> Ooh, as long as it's Oh, the- my God. Oh, man. Uh, another shout that's out. That's what I like about it most. Python's awesome episode. Keep up the great work, y'all. Are killing it. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. And they got a uh, a new podcast starting up. Uh, it's like Reptile News. It's pretty good stuff. Oh heck yeah! I'm out of the loop. I didn't know that. So heck yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Big shout out to to Gendra. Gendra. <laughs> Hell yeah. So um, uh, I'm trying to think of like uh, what I want to ask you next. There's just so many things. Um, I'm trying to think. What uh what direction do you see the show going and do you like when i think about like the show me show it's so different or you guys are trying to make it different and stand out from a lot of the other shows um that are going on and uh one of the things that i kind of like that the southeast asian shows do but the u.s shows don't do is like best in show where they like give out little like awards for people who have like the coolest monitor or the coolest python and they take into consideration not just like how rare the morph is they look at like the body structure the muscle structure if the animal's healthy or not if it's you know if it's two months old and it's already this big it's probably not going to win because you know they they are tearing it on multiple different factors um you guys ever thought about doing something like that so we do 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 we do what's called the best in show so we have uh we'll find somebody in each area that's a mystery shopper and they'll walk around they'll listen to the vendors talking to people Mm-hmm. Like, and if somebody has like a clean presentation and they're, healthy they're, animals. they're healthy animals and they're educating people and, and just being nice to the people coming into the show, you know, they'll pick one or two and we'll talk about it. You know, the people that stand out to them and, and we give them a little trophy, best in show. Yeah. And a lot of times people put it up on their, their, uh, their display. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's sweet. That's awesome. I love it. We thought about doing something like that with the ball python morphs and stuff like that, but we can't figure out how we would keep it from being a popularity contest at the show, yeah. you know? We'll just oh. cut out Bob Vu. No, Bob. Bob's a good guy. I love I, Bob. I love Bob. I think Bob won our best in show two times. Like, his customer service at the shows is, like, good. Like Immaculate. Yeah. If you don't know how to do it, you should just copy Bob when yeah. it comes to being personal. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Copy Bob's balls. Just be like Bob's balls. Bob's hey, balls. Listen, <laughs> don't get me going. Listen, you don't know, you know the conversation I just had with Sim Container last night about his spotted leopard gecko thing that was stuck to the wall. It's not supposed <laughs> to be stuck to the wall, but he, he used, he didn't, dude, he didn't brush his teeth for four days. And then hawked the loogie on this thing, and it's stuck to the wall, and now it's stuck Bruh. there forever. <laughs> well, that's that's why we started doing like that best in show trophy because we want people to gravitate towards those people that are that are positive, you know. So like, if 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 Bob's got a, a best in show trophy sitting on his display cases, 
people are going to pay attention. It's like, why does he have that? They know he's standing out. Why is he standing out? What can I do to be better? Right. So then everybody that's around him taking notice, they're starting to get better. You know, like uh, Tristan with Gecko Junkie. You know, I watch so many people emulate what he's doing, and it's awesome. You know, that's that's how our community gets better and better and better. So uh, we wanted to recognize that. So that's, yeah, we that started doing the Best in Show Trophy a long time ago. Yeah. We got cheap trophies now. We used to have really good trophies, but we've got too many tro- uh, shows for... They're all good. They're all good trophies. <laughs> they might be dollar store trophies, but they're they're still good. <laughs> right. It's the thought that counts. <laughs> yeah. Has anyone brought anything to the show, like any of the vendors brought something, and you're like, holy crap, I was not expecting to see that? In a good way? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some really cool uh, monitor species come through the show. It's like, oh, wow, look at that. Like, that's, you know, sometimes things like that. I don't know. It, <laughs> we, see, we see so many animals every weekend. It's just like, oh, cool, look, a uh, 15 gene ball python. That's awesome. Yeah. I just I think about, like, at the Massachusetts Reptile Expo, it must have been 10 years ago now. It was a long time ago. But uh, it was it was like a smaller show, and someone was there. They had a Naltinus gecko on display, and I was like, "This show has got like thirty vendors. Why is there a Naltinus gecko?" And like nobody, most people who walk by it, they didn't think any. They were like, "Oh, look, a, a lizard." And I was like, "How come no one's freaking out about the Naltinus gecko?" There's probably what two dozen of them in the United States being generous, like, and one of them is in the room right now. Nobody knows what it is. Some of my favorite yeah. things about like some of our smaller shows is that we have absolutely like a lot of variety. Like the smaller shows I see every time like Davenport. Yeah, like Davenport. Every time I go there, I see something I've never seen before. Yeah, some cool That's stuff. Awesome. Yeah. It's like it's like our Wisconsin show, you know. Sometimes there's really, really neat stuff that, that floats through there. We've got a, a guy up there that uh he does newts and salamanders and stuff. And he brings some amazing stuff. It's just like <laughs> look at his face. Yeah, he, <laughs> you should come to Wisconsin, Rob. Just saying. I have family in Wisconsin. Face. I'm just saying. Come on up. I'll be there next weekend. They've got cheese. I'll I'll treat you <laughs> some cheese carrots. <laughs> I don't. I'm the pickiest eater. I'm terrible. I I live an adventurous life, so I don't have to eat adventurously. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I would like to say that he's lying, but no, it's actually very true. It's true. It's true. I can't judge. I can't judge him. I eat like the same three things all week long. So fried chicken, red hots, and, and soda. tacos. Tacos. <laughs> and Hell yeah! Tacos. French fries. And so uh, the, I hate French fries. When we say we're lifers, it's a pretty short life that we're talking about living. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a good one. <laughs> it is. I'm here for a good time, not a long time, okay? Long time. Right. I want to be 80 years old trying to wrangle Burmese pythons. Come on, give me a fucking break. I ain't doing that. <laughs> oh, oh man. I would be I would be so down with this. Nick Reptile Park should be Rob trying foods. No. <laughs> I think it should be Rob touching food, like, with a blind. Mm-hmm. I think that would be more fun. With touching food? Ketchup. Yeah, with a finger. Ketchup. With a finger. I don't want to do that either. <laughs> I can do that, that though. I just don't want to do it. Hot wieners. <laughs> <laughs> we learned about hot wieners up in Rhode Island. Hot wieners. Oh, good. <laughs> oh I've heard, no. I've heard Rhode Island's got some hot wieners, but they they do. One. Man, they're <laughs> rough on the belly. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> oh man <laughs> Rob's been knocked out oh no <laughs> what's that stick for I don't know these guys are dead beating off the jokes <laughs> yeah. oof Rob's gotta beat back some, uh, some hot yeah, keep it away from me I just use this <laughs> It's terrible. <laughs> it's okay. So, Mickey, what are you uh what are you planning on breeding this year? This year. Uh, I'm going to try 
uh, breed some cobras. You know, I got some monocles. I got some philopenensis so I'm going to try and pair up. You know, Seven some things. some atras. I might I might throw some of my cluebirds together. They've been off for a couple of years. I used to breed them pretty heavily, so I gave them some time off. Uh, had a couple of ball python projects. I just paired up some berms. Uh, yeah, I've been breeding crested geckos on accident. So like I've got crested geckos living in uh, my office, and they just lay eggs they and just have multiply. babies. Yeah, you just look in the cage. You're like, oh, look, there's more crested geckos. <laughs> yeah, so I got to fish them out of there. I got to chase – they're, like, so small. I got to chase them around and catch them. And I really, I really enjoy them, though. Like, I, I never thought – like, I used to be like, oh, those nasty little crested geckos. And I actually dig them. Like, I like making the whole little environment and stuff, the little bioactive cages. Yeah. Dude, it's, I like I crested geckos way more than I like leeches. Oh, yeah. Way more than you like what? Leeches. Oh yeah, leeches are cool. <laughs> and they're, they're all right. These are cool. They're over chihuahuas. chihuahuas are really cool. Chihuahuas are the bomb. Chihuahuas yeah. are awesome. I got I got a pair of chihuahuas from uh Ralph Starsman from the Stone Gecko. Those mm-hmm. things are mm, mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. They're like little gecko puppy dogs. Yeah. They are. are. People are like, leeches are amazing. I'm like, have you? Leeches, most of them are jerks. One. Two, they like projectile poop on the glass constantly. Yeah. And then one, they look le- like you took a scoop of slime and just like, there's no shape to them. They're just a blob. There's, there's nothing appealing like about leeches to me. And they shit like cobras. It's terrible. Yeah. Ugh. Hey, listen. The scientific name is really pronounced leaky anus. That's, uh, that's pretty much yeah. it. They knew I what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> they knew. Oh my god. Do you have any um any Chinese cobras? Oh yeah. Like I got the siamensis and, and stuff like that. I got. Yeah, I got some Chinese covers. I got the Atras. Those are pretty cool. Mm. Heck yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm trying to like uh, build my dream collection right now because I'm finally in a state where you can legally own venomous snakes. And I'm just looking and I was like, I don't really want cobras like that. But I figured I would want to have probably one around just to teach people with. Um, and the Atras are really good. With like the big bands across the back of the neck. I'm like, dude, that's pretty cool. I feel like Atras are probably a better starter cobra than a monocle is because it doesn't get super huge and like mine are pretty chill. Yeah. Heck yeah. I Rob, I'm about I, it. I want to see this list. My yeah. list? Yeah, I want to see your list. But I'm I, afraid dude, it's funny because I was putting this list together and I was like, I, I think I've got most of the things that I want. And then I start like listing off all the I'm like, oh, I haven't worked with that yet before. I haven't worked with that. I want one of these for myself. And I watch the list go from like this to this to this to this. And I'm like, I thought I was done. I thought I was I thought I was like close to having everything I wanted. And then not yeah. so much. Every, every time I say I'm not getting any more snakes, my buddy Josh Alder will be like, hey, I got this thing for you. And it's like, oh, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> Yeah, dude, the the Atra are what I was what I was thinking of. Those things are badass. They're so cool. I'm gonna pair them up this year, so I'll make you a baby. It'll be fun. Oof. I'm down. Oof. I can't have them where I'm at right now, but I should be moving in the next year or two. It'll be a while. Yeah. Dude, don't just just know Mickey's gonna make you a baby, Rob. That's, I'm down. I'll make you a baby. Hell yeah. You're welcome. And then you can start with a little noodle. It's it's so much fun starting with a little one. Yeah, tiny angry hood. (laughs) (laughs) Oh Oh, yeah. So now I I want to know what uh what kind of colubrid stuff are are you working with? What kind of colubrids? Yeah. Uh, I got a bunch of corn snakes. I I got a lot of pachophis. Like I got a, I think I got like, yeah. I got a ton of black pine snakes. Yeah. I I love the pits. They're super cool. Uh, 
actually our our uh, our logo, the snake that's in our logo is actually a pachofis. Hell, so yeah. Hell yeah. I've always I've always dug those a lot. The black the black I don't think I'm gonna carry any of those up. No. Not this year. It's fine. fine. You don't have to make me a baby. It's okay. Rob, oh. Rob. You're a baby <laughs> pendulum pine snake. <laughs> Dude, it's it's crazy because like when I was working at the pet store, I would get a lot of younger people who would come in and they'd be like, I want my first snake to be a pine snake. And I'm like, first off. Who told you about pine snakes? And second off, <laughs> why a pine snake? And they're like, oh, Emily from Snake Discovery breeds pine snakes. So I want a pine snake as my first snake. And I'm like. Yeah, who who knew? That's wild. I mean, it'd be a good starter snake. I mean, if you, I mean, a lot of times they're not too bad. They're just hissy. They're hissy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If as long as they're not afraid of snakes, if you're afraid of snakes, a pit is not a good idea. It's just gonna scare the crap out of you with how loud they are. <laughs> right. It's like the guys that buy the the baby cobra, and then whenever it gets about two foot long, they're like, "I am so scared of this. Like, I can't deal with it." Yeah. Dumb. Yeah, I I love using uh, using pits when uh, when I'm at my friend's shop in in Georgia. Um, She's got a bunch of bull snakes in stock, so I I love using them to talk, to just talk about like snake brain, and getting them to realize the different modes of thought that the snakes have. You know, I'm like, it's it's inevitable. You open the drawer and it's freaked out. You know, you got to give it a second, start thinking, and then you see the switch go off in their brain. And I I think out of all the pits that I've worked with. Uh, the black pine, I would see that switch go off a lot clearer than some of the other species. Um, you know, when they just realize, like, okay, everything is, everything is cool. We're gonna be okay. Nothing's gonna right. stay. You know. And then it's like, now look, now it's awesome. As long as you don't do anything crazy, stupid, fast in front of its face, it's not gonna lose its mind, and you'll be good. You know. <laughs> I was doing an education show one time and I had one of my big black pines out and I was waving my hands around and that thing shit all over me. Like, <laughs> I scared it and it just <laughs> like, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. It got all hippie and stuff. Yeah, it was Dude, great. The, the <laughs> worst is when you're doing like a line of shows, so you're doing shows all day. And a snake pees on you in the second show. So you have to just like be smelling <laughs> all day long. It's terrible. Uh, we do what's called her pikes. And uh, a lot of times after that, like we'll have education shows and stuff. The worst is like trying to chase a frog into a pond and then spending all day with wet boots on, having to do the rest of the day like that. Yeah. That's that's pretty rough. Do it. Not happening. <laughs> <laughs> not for me yeah oof big oof okay so we're winding down we're getting to our hour mark uh but before we say our goodbyes we ask all of our guests one question and that question is what in the realm of reptiles, be it something that you guys have in your own collection or something that you're seeing at a show or whatever, what in the realm of reptiles has you excited about reptiles? Uh, for me right now, I'm building a relationship with a pair of baby Sumatran King Cobras. I'm really excited about that. Uh, that's, yeah. that's, that's what's keeping me going right now. What, what, what's your answer? What's that? What's your, your answer? answer? What's the question again? I zoned out. <laughs> what's got you excited about reptiles? Just being here. <laughs> we'll, we'll accept We've had a long day. We'll take it. <laughs> That's fair. Of That's course fair. you'll take it. What about you? Yeah, what about you? <laughs> oh, you don't get to flip this on us. That's not how this works. Uh-uh-uh. Yeah, Jeremy That's how we work. flip it on him. Uh-uh-uh. I don't think oh, so. Are you prepared? <laughs> <laughs> I'm prepared, but but we don't we don't get we don't we don't get asked questions over here. That's not how the Yankees work. 
We asked all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I think we're both really excited just to watch the community grow and, and move in a positive direction. Uh, that, that's probably pretty fair for both of us. Hell, yeah. That's where it's at, man. How about it? So, if people want to find out more about the Show Me Snakes show, where should they go to do that? www.showmesnakes.com. Google that shit. (laughs) You heard it. Google that shit. (laughs) Bruh. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for coming on. We appreciate you. Thanks for having us. Hopefully you guys have a good show tomorrow.